Thank you for tuning in to the community conversation brought to you by Prototype Training Systems, home of CrossFit Prototype. Sam and I are back with another nutrition episode to help provide you with some education and strategies to better your nutrition while still enjoying your social life. There's a lot of misinformation out there on nutrition and we aim to give you some clarity. This week, we wanted to talk about cheat days. Very excited. Talk about the ideas of cheat days, what uh, a cheat day is, and what we think of them. So Sam, uh, how would you define cheat day? So I think a cheat day is like classified as a day of eating what you normally would not. So something that's like overly indulgent or maybe more calorie dense or maybe not as balanced in terms of macros, but it's eating food and probably drinking is included in this that like doesn't fit into your normal day-to-day nutrition plan. Is that how you would classify it, John? Yeah, pretty, pretty spot on. So did you ever, uh, do you have cheat days currently, Sam? (laughs) I don't. I also don't follow a diet plan. I uh, am a big proponent of eat what you want, everything in moderation, Um, so no, I don't have cheat days because I don't ever restrict like what I eat during the week. Um, nothing is on the table. Have you ever? Have I ever? That's a good question. I did, which I know we have talked about as like a potential future topic. I did when I was going through my dietetic internship have like two week spans where the other interns and I ate like specific diets for two weeks and it was terrible and I hated it. So I would kind of say that the day after all of those two week intervals was like a cheat day. Um, but it was just like going back to my normal eating. Um, so no, I don't think I've ever had like a cheat day lifestyle, but I have always grown up and like always been consistent in like, I eat what I want. And that includes like cakes and cookies and cupcakes, um, every single day of my life. And so nothing is off the table for me. How about you? Uh, I'm, I'm a little different than you because I, (laughs) I've definitely had cheat really have cheat days. Um, I have days where I eat more calories, but so uh, I'll give you my little story of kind of like my dieting history. Mm-hmm. Um, I used to follow like uh, the paleo diet. If you're not familiar with what the paleo diet is, paleo diet is essentially the caveman diet. You eat meat, you can eat fruits and vegetables, you can eat nuts and seeds, you can eat um, you know, essentially anything that's not processed or some things on there that aren't allowed, like white potato versus sweet potato. I don't remember why that's not allowed on there. You can't have bread, no, so no flour, no dairy, um, no anything prepackaged, no added sugar. Uh, most, so basically just whole foods, which in the context of that, is probably how most of us should eat the majority of our diet. It should be pretty well, you know, should have some high quality protein. You should have fruits and vegetables in your diet. And you should probably minimize processed food. But just dream of labeling, okay, this is what I'm allowed to have and this is what I'm not allowed to have. I had to go ahead and, you know, have a designated time where I was actually able to eat that stuff. So that would typically be a Saturday. I would. I would go ahead on a Saturday and I would, I would eat no paleo. <laughs> I would go the total opposite direction. I, I mean, I probably eat, probably still eat some meat and stuff like that, but um, I would eat like pop tarts for breakfast. I would have candy as much as I possibly could go ahead and uh, fit into my day or that I wanted to have. Um, I would probably get takeout for lunch. It'd be like something like McDonald's or like Burger King, just like really gross food that I don't even have in my diet now where I have like that freedom to have whatever I want. But I would basically eat as much shit as I possibly could. (laughs) And I would make sure that I had like a nice big dessert and that didn't have a portion limit either. And I'd almost eat to the point of not feeling good. Like I'd feel like sick to my stomach essentially trying to get it out of my system because I knew the next day I wasn't able to do that again. Mm -hmm. I had to go back to the plan, which was none of, you know, none of the things that 
I like to have now in moderation, but I wasn't allowed to have them at all. So I'm like, okay, well, if I can't have a bagel, then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make sure that I make the best of it when I have it. And it would just be like the other extreme. So how'd you feel on that? Terrible. Well, I felt it was like, it felt like a, um, like, okay, like this is my only opportunity. Mm -hmm. My only opportunity to go ahead and enjoy these foods because uh, of the rules that I that type of diet regimen. Um, And I really like having bread. It's like something that I have now on a daily basis. I like love having bagels and I love having um, like, uh, like, like a sandwich occasionally. But because I wasn't allowed to have those things, it was, all right, I got to go ahead and just have as much whatever is possible and yeah did not feel good <laughs> how did it how did it, that work like with your goals like did you have like training goals and like how did that diet cheat day cycle uh work along those goals so it wasn't along the lines of a goal it was i thought that i had to eat strictly paleo to be healthy and that there's no way that I could go my entire life without having some of those other things. So it was just like the day of the week that I could go ahead and get it out of my system. I wouldn't like, I wasn't thinking in the mindset of, okay, like I'm going to eat more calories to eat more calories. I'm going to eat the foods I'm not allowed to eat. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like how I approached it. Um, But what ended up happening is that when I did that is I had these hard rules where I couldn't have this Uh, most days, and this is the only day that I can have it, if let's say on a Wednesday, I had one thing that wasn't allowed on that list, that would turn into a cheat day. Mm. Because those rules that I set uh, on my diet was, you're either strict paleo or you're not. And then it was, okay, well, since I had a piece of bread, then I might as well go ahead and have some candy. I might as well go ahead and have that, you know, I might as well run the Dunkin' Donuts and get a coffee colada, like stuff that I don't normally have, but I would do it because it's like, all right, well, today's ruined, so I might as well make the best of it. And um, it was distorted eating. It was like a re- bad relationship with food. It was, you can have this sometimes, uh, you have to have this at all times. And then if I didn't like follow those parameters, it was like, it wasn't good. There was no balance. It was like, it was either you're on or you're off your diet. Yeah. So maybe a personal question, but how did you break out of that cycle? How did you change from like paleo strictly during the week and then cheat day on the weekend or maybe a Wednesday um, into like what you are eating now? Because you don't now eat with cheat days, correct? No, I don't have cheat days now. I make everything kind of work with what I want. I have things that I would, that I would, wouldn't consider the most nutritious or healthiest things you could that you could have on a regular basis Mm -hmm. but because i allow those things in my diet i don't i don't feel the need to go to the extreme i mean what worked for me which may not work for other people is that i started monitoring how much like i was actually eating like i kind of looked at my nutrition as like a budget it's like all right so if i have um you know if i have like fruits and vegetables in my diet and I have lean protein, I hit my, hit my protein targets. Then there's a little bit of room to have like, you know, like um, an ice cream sandwich mm-hmm. or something like that. If I want to have that or, have, you know, a big old cream cheese, if I want it, I kind of looked at it as like a budget that worked for me because it was like, cool. I know that I'm having a lot of quality food in my diet because I have it like listed out. Um, but I also know that, when I am having like an ice cream cone or whatever, that it's not going to go over my calorie budget. But Mm -hmm. I started like being very like strict with when I was, when I first, you know, learned about like tracking your macros and stuff like that. I don't think I really even knew exactly like what the, um, you know, like why it was important to have that much protein or anything like that. I was just, okay, like, here's kind of like what you can have. And Mm -hmm. I made that kind of fit into like a budget, but now I kind of, I go a little bit, I still track my food, but the weekends are like probably a little bit more intuitive, but they're definitely not like cheat day mindset. Like if I have two beers, like it doesn't mean I'm going to go ahead and like slam a bag of candy. Um, <laughs> like I did before. It's kind of, it, I guess it became a gradual thing. It definitely like the education was huge. And then the habits along the way of like, okay, like figuring out like what, what worked best for me and 
um, what made me feel good versus, you know, eating something that wasn't over, that didn't make me feel satisfied after a meal, but still trying to keep it in my calorie budget. Then I learned like, okay, like you can't just fill your diet with junk food just to go ahead and hit your macros. Like you have to, you know, for your health and just so you, you know, feel your best, like you need to have quality food in your diet. So I, I guess for me, it was like, education but also just like habits and figuring out like what works best for me and then i made fruits and vegetables like a huge priority it's like have that with every meal that was like a habit that st that started with um yeah just like prioritizing that like if you're gonna have like if you're gonna have some of these things in your diet like if you're gonna have like a bagel which you know um may not be it may be a little bit higher calories in having you know a, a freaking watermelon, but I want to have that sometimes. And, um, you know, I made sure that I still prioritize the quality and nutritious foods. So long to answer your question shortly, it was kind of a gradual thing. Yeah. Well, that makes sense too. It's like you, you found something that helped you kind of like get rid of like food is good versus bad and totally change your mindset on that. And for you, that was tracking macros to realize that like, oh, this ice cream has some fat and some carbs and some protein in it. So it actually fits into my, my day, yeah. um, it's like the goals I'm trying to hit. So yeah, like changing the mindset, finding a habit that worked for you, and then just continuing to build on that as you learn more is, I think, a great way to kind of get out of that cycle. Um, because cheat days, like, I guess they work for some people. Like, Cheat days work for some people. Uh, Brian has cheat days in his life and he loves it. And that's worked for him for what, 20 years? Like it yeah. works for some people. Um, but, but by and large, I think for a lot of people, it absolutely does not work for the same reason you said. Like if you do something that doesn't fit into the diet on a Wednesday, then it's like, oh, well, Wednesday's a cheat day too. Or last Saturday, I had all of this food, but like this week I want to go bigger. And so I want to have more. Um, and if you're someone who's like trying to gain or lose weight or build muscle or do anything that's like specific in terms of goals, having a cheat day where you're not tracking or not eating what makes you feel good takes you away from those goals. Yeah, no, totally. I mean, a lot of people don't know either. Like when I was like 11, 12 years old, I was like almost 200 pounds. Like my doctor said I was going to be, I was pre-diabetic when I was younger. Mm -hmm. So that was like the other extreme of, I have no education on nutrition mm -hmm. and every day is just eat whatever I wanted. And what I wanted was pasta for breakfast, which was weird, but I did. I had pasta for breakfast all the time. I wanted peanut butter sandwiches, like for snacks. You ever have like the Nutter Butters? I would eat like three of those in a sitting. I, have no, mm -hmm. I had like five Mountain Dews at a time. It yeah. was... It was the other extreme of, okay, this isn't a cheat day mindset. This is a bad habit mindset. And that's where it's like, kind of like got it blending the two together of like, you have to like, you have to like, you have to prioritize quality food. Like there's no, like, there's no doubt about it. Like you have to qual uh, prioritize quality food. And if you don't, you're probably going to turn out like me who was <laughs> pre-diabetic. Like you just didn't, didn't know any better. I was like, oh, really? What's that mean? He's like, oh, you're going to get put on medication. I'm like, oh, that doesn't sound fun at all. I should probably start eating better. Mm -hmm. And then when you go ahead and, um, you know, think that, okay, well, these are all the things that made me unhealthy versus like being like, okay, well, the big picture is that you didn't have much at all that was actually good for you. You're, the, the majority of your diet was just processed food that was high in sugar, high in salt, and just super palatable. So, you know, having to, you know, start from that, like that, um, that uh, portion of my journey was starting where I like, okay, eating, eating vegetables that I wasn't even doing yet. So if someone said you have to drink this much water, eat the vegetables, you have to cut out everything, you have to go strict paleo, I'd be like, I don't think I can do that. Right. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. Then it's okay. Well, how do you go ahead and how do you start eating better if your diet is so far away from what you would think of a standard nutritious diet? And that's where it's 
the habits along the way that have to be developed versus just being like, I'm not going to have these things anymore. And then on Saturday, I'm going to have as much as I can. Because mm-hmm. then you're not developing any habits. And then what we talked about, if you slip up, and I'll say slip up because if you're going to put those rules in your diet, yeah, you're slipping up on, your, on what you would consider what your diet is. You're probably going to do what I did and you're just going to turn multiple days into cheat days. So what we think about cheat days is that they can be detrimental to your progress because you're not only going to have a poor relationship with food, your mindset's going to be, I'm, uh, I, how I'm eating is determining how I, um, what am I looking for? It's like people put moral values on food and how they go ahead and, um, you know, look at themselves as a person where how you're eating isn't, it's not a, it's not a, um, it's not a, what am, what am I trying to say, Sam? I think what you're trying to get at is that like, if you eat something that you deem bad, yeah. it doesn't make you a bad person. Yes. First off, food is not good or bad. Like food just brings you closer, further from your goals or is more or less nutritious or like makes you feel better or worse. Yeah. And so there should be no moral value on food. And so if you eat something that you deem as bad, uh, you're already like putting labels that don't need to be there. And then you're taking that label on an inanimate object and then placing it on yourself. Um, Which like seems wild to think about if we did it in any other situation. Like we don't label other things good and bad, like we label food. and then to also then internalize that and say like, oh, I'm bad for eating this piece of candy. It's really hard. It's, it's like really hard to break out of that cycle too. And so like, that's why cheat days kind of like make that thought process compound on itself of, oh, I had a bad day. And so I'm just going to make it worse. Um, and it, it like has a huge effect on mood and morale and all those things as well. So yeah, cheat days, <laughs> um, not always the best um in our opinion yeah i mean you probably hear people say all the time like oh i'm gonna get back on track mm-hmm. like if they're out like with their friends or they're at a barbecue they're like oh, i'll get back on track tomorrow mm-hmm. so they have like four brownies okay like just have just have like one yeah or like, you know have a drink like you don't have to have doesn't have to be you know seven because you had one or two you know mm-hmm. Um, and if it is seven, it's seven. Like, yeah, your body probably wanted seven brownies. Like, (laughs) yeah, I also look at like memories versus like, you know, sometimes you're going to like, you're going to prioritize memories over, you know, your nutrition, which Mm -hmm. sometimes it's fine. Like at my brother's wedding, I was, you know, I probably had, yeah, I probably had like six drinks. I ate whatever I wanted. Like, Mm-hmm. That was a memory that was worth it for me. Um, right. But like just thinking, was I being bad? It's like, no, I was like, I was enjoying my brother's wedding. Like sometimes yeah. like we both put like our, like so much like um, pressure on ourselves when we are being social or we are having a good time that, you know, we go to those extremes where we, you know, have to be super strict with our diet. And that's kind of what, you don't want to do if you want to make long-term progress is you have to you have to give yourself a little bit of you know a little bit of like slack with your nutrition where you can't be super strict but you also don't want to go to the other end too where you're just like super um i mean you just like no rules yeah or yeah. Plan I mean, I've been there. my life is a constant struggle of like i eat ice cream and then i wake up in the morning and i feel terrible <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, I have no rules about it. I don't feel bad about eating ice cream. There's nothing there, but it's just like, oh man, like I have a stomach ache. Like yeah. next time I probably shouldn't have the entire pint of Ben and Jerry's, right? Like it's a balance. <laughs> um, <laughs> and it's, it's like, it's hard to find that balance. I think like there's a lot of, there's a lot of messaging, right? And sometimes like we even like in our saying around it, like we probably have preconceived notions about foods too. And like John, your history with food and like my history with food of like, we already come in with preconceived notions about foods. And so there's probably times that I've been like, oh yeah, like we'll get right back on track next week. Or, you know what I mean? Like we say these things all the time. And like, so if we're saying it, I'm sure other people are saying it too. Um, 
but at the end of the day, if like we can get to a place where like nothing is really ever off the table, you're making choices more often than not to eat something that nutritious and like fulfills you and like helps your body, but also have those times that like, like your brother's wedding, like you enjoy every moment of the experiences that you're having. Um, and like food isn't the thing that you're thinking about all the time either. Then you like live, what's the saying? Eat to live, live to eat. You know what what I'm talking about? Yeah. Um, Like your life does not need to be centered around food all the time. It can be like, I'm sure a lot of people listening like love to cook. And so like the thought of cooking is an exciting thing, but I know like food stresses a lot of people out too. And so to like worry about being perfect all the time with the diet, like that's what leads to cheat days. Um, And the more we can avoid that, the better. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we say all the time, or I mean, we say, but you probably also heard all the time is like, just be consistent. Consistent Mm -hmm. does not mean perfection. You know, like consistent is doing the same things all the time can you do what you're doing every single day for the rest of your life and if the answer is no then you need to make some changes Mm -hmm. if like you or i should say like myself who was eating paleo i couldn't do that sustainably it was not something that i enjoyed and all i ever thought about was i can't wait till saturday so i can splurge and eat whatever because i can't just have a little bit I have to have I can only stick to these these food rules once those food rules went away it was okay now I can have things in moderation because it's not that I forgot all the quality food that I should be having on that paleo approach it said having a cup of rice is fine I don't want to have a sweet potato every day. I want to have rice sometimes. (laughs) Right. I want to have like other like I want to have more variety in my diet. And sometimes having too much of that stuff too is um, you know, if you're an athlete and you're trying to um you're trying to gain weight, gain muscle, eating strictly clean paleo is miserable. You are full all the time. Those foods are super filling. Mm -hmm. So if you need extra calories because you're super active and you want to actually perform in the gym, sometimes you need to have some of those things like white rice versus having a sweet potato or having a sandwich versus having edamame pasta. Like, you know, like- you, there's, or, there's a trend. There's like a thing that we're seeing a lot in the nutrition world too, that people are deficient in vitamins and minerals because they're not having things that are processed and fortified with like thiamine and niacin. So it's like, yeah, sure. like a piece of white bread doesn't fall in the paleo diet and it's been demonized by the world. But like, there's a reason white bread still is in existence and it's because it's fortified with other nutrients that like, okay, maybe it doesn't have as much fiber as like that like brown rice that you're eating, but it also has something else uh, that like helps the body and also it tastes good. So like have it every now and then. Yeah, like, um... I mean, if we were to just like kind of go on a little sidebar here, I mean, if you have if you have sweet potato versus white potato, the only difference is how quickly your body is going to process that and turn it into sugar. Mm-hmm. Any carbohydrates that you have, whether you're having broccoli, white bread, sweet potato, or whole grain pasta, it's all going to break down into the same thing. And your body doesn't see broccoli, it doesn't see white bread, it doesn't see, you know, oats. It's used source of carbohydrates and it's either going to be a complex carb or it's going to be a simple carb. Mm-hmm. And once your body breaks that down, it's going to turn into the same thing. So complex carbs are typically going to make you feel full longer because they're going to take longer to break down. They have um, there's more sugar molecules in a complex carbohydrate than a simple carbohydrate. So if you were to just have um, mostly simple carbohydrates in your diet, you're probably just going to eat more than you need because those things aren't overly filling. So that's why it's, well, having that balance that if you have a bagel, you know, a white bagel Mm -hmm. and you have fruits and vegetables in your diet, how much carbohydrates are you having? You know, if you're having uh, 200 grams of carbohydrates with a mix, or if you're having 200 grams of carbohydrates of just, uh, you know, paleo or just complex and those types, 
it's not going to make a difference on how you're going to take in different nutrients, but that's, that's it. You're going to take in different nutrients. And like I said, if you need more calories, having all those complex carbohydrates, probably not going to make your stomach feel good. A lot of those things come with fiber too. So you're going to end up like having so much fiber. You're going to be like, Oh my, you know, and then you start look, looking at your gut health and you're like, what's wrong with me? It's well, maybe you're just having too much fiber, you know? Like, <laughs> and sometimes it's not, um, you know, it's just forcing yourself to have things that your body doesn't want that much of. So too much of anything isn't good. So mm-hmm. having a little bit more of like that, that balance of some of your simple and more complex carbohydrates and, you know, give yourself permission to have some of those things that you might quote unquote think are, you know, bad for you because they don't, you, there is a process to making them like bread. Mm-hmm. Uh, give yourself permission to have it. If you feel good, your energy feels good, your health markers are fine, then what's the, what's the issue? Right. And yeah. that's, that's, that's what it boils down to is have a ra- variety in the diet. Yeah. Things you enjoy. Choose more nutrition, nutritious options more frequently, but give yourself, well, not but, it's an and. And give yourself uh, permission or leniency or whatever word you want to use to eat things that like maybe aren't as nutritious. Yeah, just for your own like, just just sanity, just sustainability. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's like, there's like a, there's a lot of research out there of like, you know, whether you're, if like people that have that balance of their diet is that they stick to it long term. Anyone that does like, shouldn't say anyone, but um, if you do something that's overly strict and you can't adhere to it, it doesn't matter if you lost 30 pounds in 12 weeks. If you can't do that forever, then that's, it's not a healthy way of eating because you're 20 pounds in 12 weeks is also aggressive anyone listening don't don't try to do that yeah sorry to you john (laughs) probably gonna yeah i mean it would probably be muscle but that's a whole different conversation yeah yeah. um but yeah so cheat days be weary yeah i'm (laughs) I'm not a fan of cheat days not usually i'm not a fan of cheat days because of the terminology around it just the mindset yeah it's the mindset yeah it's just like good or bad yeah <laughs> maybe if every day you eat the way you want to eat choosing nutrition nutritious options no day is a cheat day yep sure there's some days i wake up and i'm like oh man i wish i had some more vegetables yesterday there's some days i wake up and i'm like ah, oh, my stomach kind of hurts i probably had too much ice cream but like that's just life you know yeah. um, you go with the ebbs and the flows and if you allow yourself to enjoy foods every day of the week then you don't feel restricted. You don't feel like you're put into a box. You don't feel the need to have a quote unquote cheat day or a cheat meal. Cause I hear some people talk about just like a cheat meal. Um, you just have a more calorie dense meal. You have yeah. a more fat dense meal, you know, not cheating. Yeah. It's just the mindset behind it. You're right. You're, you're like, you're going to eat more calories from time to time. And sometimes you're not going to eat as much cause you're not going to be hungry. So mm-hmm. you know, versus looking at when you eat more is like being bad or cheating you know, just look at it as you're just eating a little bit more than you usually do. It doesn't mm-hmm. have to be the extreme. You know, you don't have to go home after you already had a, a meal that you enjoyed and then go through the cupboard and, you know, do <laughs> just like graze on food because you're like, well, fuck it. Like, <laughs> I got to get this out of my system. <laughs> you didn't do anything wrong. You just ate a little bit more. Maybe mm-hmm. you went out to dinner, you know? Yeah. Which is like, we could explore so much down this path. Yep. Like the emotional side behind it. And I know like that, that would be probably a three hour conversation, but it really is like, there is emotional part of eating. There is a mental part of eating. It's not just cut and dry. Here's the science. This is what I should do. Yeah. So yeah, definitely. working through that definitely hard, but definitely worthwhile. For sure. John, anything else that you can think of that you want to touch on about uh, cheat days, your opinion on cheat days, anything else you've experienced any other tips and tricks for people to like kind of get out of that mindset what do you got i mean if you're someone that currently does if you have a cheat day now and you kind of have uh that you know that's i don't know maybe that's in your definition maybe that's like in your vocabulary i mean uh you know i'm having cheat day or i'm having a cheat meal you know ask yourself like what does the rest of my diet look like that i just that i need to have this meal that is you know glorified um 
And if you're like, you know, well, maybe because I don't have all these things in my diet, it's like, well, why can't we have some of that stuff in moderation? Mm -hmm. And if you don't know how, you know, reach out to a coach, like have someone help you so you can learn how to have that balance in your life where you're not, you know, being overly strict with your nutrition and doing something that is um, unsustainable for you in the long run, or it makes you have to think about food all the time. Like you don't, like you got better things to do than just think about. <laughs> yeah. No, that's a good point. I think a lot of people feel like I can't do moderation. It's either the light switch is either on or off. Um, and definitely the kind of person who enjoys CrossFit is that kind of person, right? Like the switch is on or off. You give it your all or it's, it's not happening. And that's fine. That's a good way to be. That's probably why so many people that we know and we talk to are so successful in life. Um, but that does not need to be the mentality around food. It's like you can have cookies in the house and not eat the whole batch. <laughs> yeah. You know, like it, it's a, it's a, it's a, a hard thing to work through, but it's definitely worthwhile. So I'm glad you brought that up because if someone is listening to this or watching this and is like, wow, that is me. Yeah. Whoever you are, please talk to, talk to us. We, that is what we are meant to do is help you work through that. Yeah. Um, I was at a barbecue, uh, last weekend and someone at the barbecue said that they were going to get surgery because they like to eat the way they want to eat. And they, they're like, like anyone that says eating in moderation doesn't know what they're talking about. Oh, and I just thought that that was like one of the most interesting things I've ever heard that someone would rather have surgery mm -hmm. than learn how to have like a balanced approach to their nutrition. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We could have a whole other podcast on that, that one. Would, that could be a whole other conversation. <laughs> it's worth learning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And don't think because you have done this for however many years of your life, like it can't change, right? Like John, you said like you grew up with a different kind of background of like, like you had a different learned pattern of eating yep. and the way you are eating now. And so you made that change personally. Um, so it's definitely possible to make changes in how you think about food and how you eat later on in life. Of course, it's a nice head start when you get that from the beginning. Um, but it's always, uh, something that can change. And the biggest thing I have to say is definitely now learning, John, all this stuff. I'm sure that when Riley grows up, you're going to like start this kind of like nutrition foundation for her at a young age. And so she's going to be set up where she's like learning to eat well. She eats things she enjoys. She is okay having ice cream every now and then. That's and it. like, right, you are setting up the next generation for success in the nutrition field. It's pretty That's cool. The goal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's awesome. It's, it's definitely worth making that change if you are someone who's like stuck in that rut of like, I need a cheat day because I need like one bad day in my week. Right. Yeah. Guys, thanks for listening. Sam, I'll let you exit us out. <laughs> outro? All right. I got to work on this and get it all nailed down like you have the intro. But so to anybody listening and or watching, thank you for tuning in and staying around this long. Uh, we hope you got some useful information out of today. If you have any questions, please reach out to us. You can talk to us directly, probably send a text, message us on Facebook, or send an email. We would love to sit down and talk with you about nutrition. So if you want to schedule a nutrition consult, you can do that as well. In the meantime, have a wonderful day, and we will talk with you soon. Thanks for listening.